Hi guys. Okay, I know I've been gone a while, but what can I say? Some people thought I would have more time in the winter once my garden was done. Well, we just like to keep busy around here. So anyway, I, yeah, I have a couple videos up on YouTube that I haven't even had time to write a little sentence and click post. They're old. I don't know yet if I'll make them public. I've, been, I've done a couple videos over the win winter. Well, I've done a bunch, but taking the time to put them together is just not there. And I haven't been on YouTube much. So anyway, what this is about is several of you have been with me for quite a while and you've seen me make bone broth. And I've told you from my bone broth that I often make uh, bouillon. And um, so this time it's gonna be beef that I'm making. I prefer anything dehydrated um, or canned, dehydrated I like better, over anything frozen. So um, we recently butchered a steer and I had the butcher save me some bones and I'll insert a picture here of um, the bones before I put them in the oven. Okay, I put those oven, those bones in the oven at 400 degrees, and honestly, guys, I don't know how long they were in there. I, I just kept an eye on them until they turned brown. Someone asked why I was roasting the bones, and it to give it a richer flavor and a richer color. And I put them in a pot of cold water, and I let them simmer, and then to, I added carrots and onions and celery and garlic, some peppercorns, um, I think that's all that I added that day. I let it simmer for a few hours, and then that evening it was still very cold, so I set it outside on my patio because it was in one of my great big stock pots. And now I'm going to insert a picture of what it looked like the next morning. It had about this much of the beef fat on top, and I skimmed that off. So after I skimmed off the fat, and if there's fat in there, guys, this is a healthy fat, remember, because this was grass-fed Angus beef. So the fat's not gonna hurt you, but when you dehydrate something, you don't want fat in that because it'll make your food go rancid. So um, then I put it back on the stove and I let it simmer most of the day to reduce it down. It had reduced down, so I took the bones out I strained the uh, vegetables off, dipped the vegetables off and strained everything out. Set it back out on the porch again. And this morning I brought it in and I'm gonna insert a picture of what it looked like this morning. There was just a thin layer of fat on the top of it. And this is what it looked like this morning. Skim that thin layer of fat off, and now I'm going to heat it back up again just to get it to a liquid state because it's pretty congealed right now, which is a good sign because I got all the collagens and everything out of the bones. So I'm going to have to heat it up one last time, and then I'm going to strain it and get all of the, you know, there's going to be particles in there, and there'll be um, little tiny pieces of meat that I didn't catch, and maybe little pieces of pepper and the peppercorns and vegetables, what have you. So I'm going to strain all that now. Um, you can do it through cheesecloth, but y'all know me, I use my cotton, my flour sack towels, and that's what I use to strain. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then after I do it, um, well, I'll show you. Guys, right quick while I'm waiting for that, uh, Broth to go back to the liquid state, I'm gonna show you one of some of my favorite things to dehydrate, frozen vegetables. Go to the grocery store, get your bag of frozen vegetables, spread them out on your uh, dehydrator tray, plug that baby in, and the next morning your vegetables are dehydrated. I love that. You don't have, I mean, they've already been prepared for freezing, so they've already been blanched for dehydrating and takes up less space, they don't freeze or burn, they don't get icy, and it takes just about as long to rehydrate your vegetables as it does to warm them up from frozen state. There you go, 
two pound, that was a two pound bag of frozen peas. They fit perfect in a pint jar. I usually uh, vacuum seal my jars. And since I'm in the middle of so many things, I'll do that later. So let's get on to that broth. All right, guys, I got it all strained. Thank goodness, it was pretty yucky. And let me show you what I've got in my pot. So what you do on your dehydrator, get your fruit roll-up tray, because it's got the little lip on it. And my table is crooked. I don't like to do it this way with the liquid because it's just too messy for me. So I'm gonna do a batch tonight this way, and then tomorrow morning it'll be gelled. My table is really uneven where I've got this set up. Um, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six trays. I have six fruit roll-up trays. So I'm gonna have this all set up. You see what I do is I put the liquid in there, and then I'm gonna run the dehydrator on the meat section and um, when I get them all set up, I'll show you. But then this liquid will dry and you're gonna have bouillon. And it makes amazing bouillon. So anyway, let me get them over there where they belong and all set up and, and I'll come back. Okay guys, I've got it in the dehydrator. I've got my, what did I say, six trays. Each of my fruit roll-up trays will only hold about a half to three quarter cup um, of the broth and I know that's not very much but I really like the bouillon so it works great for me and I've got it set over on 160 degrees and it'll just run all night something I like about dehydrating put your stuff in there and let her go okay let's check we'll check on it in the morning all right, guys, it's the next morning, and this is what it's gonna look like on your um, fruit roll-up tray. Can't remember what it's called. So I'm gonna sit down here and show you what I do, but basically you just kind of peel it off. And I'm not wearing gloves because of the coronavirus. I'm wearing gloves because I've had a few stitches on my hand. No, not what you think. I didn't try to cut my hand off. I, you know, I wouldn't go to the doctor if that's what I did. But anyway, you just kind of peel this stuff off and let me sit down and I'll show you what I, how I do it. Okay, I've already done one tray and this is what I got. Look how beautiful that um, bouillon is. No, you don't get a whole lot it, and it is time consuming. So if you don't wanna do this, you know, Go buy it at the store, I guess, but um, I know what's in this. And if you've ever read the ingredients on the back of the store-bought bouillon, it usually starts with salt and flavorings and blah, blah, blah. And then you might say beef flavoring and the very last ingredient might say beef fat or something like that. I haven't read the beef, but that's what the chicken says. All right, so we're just gonna, I don't know how I can do this but I'm just gonna peel it off like this. And I'll just do a small batch real quick so I can get this done. And as y'all, most of you know, I have a whole bunch of these little tiny coffee grinders and I use them for grinding spices, you know, for my spice mixes and, and just put that in there. You know, if I weren't so busy talking, I would know that I would do it with the parchment paper. And here we go. Okay, it's got larger pieces, which is what I expect. So now I'm going to take this parchment paper. I dump all my stuff out on the parchment paper. I 
should have done this the first time. Pour it into my coffee grinder. And then I'm just gonna sit here and grind until I get a powder. It doesn't take long, but you don't need to listen to all that. Okay, there's the powder that I just got. I'm gonna dump it out on back on the parchment paper. Get my little jar. And there's my bullion. So I'm gonna to get to work and finish doing these and um, I'll come back and show you why I prefer the gel, the, when it's more like gelatin than the liquid. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to fill the dehydrator again and I'm gonna show you why I prefer to do it when it's kind of in the gelatin stage, just because it's not as messy putting it on there. Yes, it's gonna melt. Yes, it's gonna to go to liquid and yes, I have overestimated how much the tray would hold and I've had it melt all over, but oh well, part of the fun. So all I'm gonna do is I've got the gelatin, just took this out of the refrigerator and the pot's right here next to me and I'm just gonna dip it out, just kind of smash it around. Um, Sometimes I can cut it out and just put real thin slices, but I'm not able to cut it this time. Anyway, that's what I do. It's going back in the dehydrator and 12 hours later, I'll make more bouillon. Well guys, it's actually the next day and I was gonna show you more of the, how it turned out in the, from putting it on as gelatin form, because I actually can get a little bit more on there than um, if I have to pour the liquid, it's just less messy. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know, but um, I didn't get it done. So anyway, I'm going to get this uploaded and I appreciate y'all for being here. Stay safe. Stay home and save lives and stay safe. All right, guys, thanks for being here. I'll try to do a better job, but how many times have you heard me say that? See y'all later.